People don't know the value of music these days. I don't stream music. It doesn't support the artists. It's the labels, man. They're killing the industry. What's up, everybody? I'm Finn McKenty. This is the Punk Rock NBA. It's no secret that if you want to make a lot of money, then being a musician is probably not the best career choice, right? Like, we all know that. But what I think is not so well understood is why. Why is it that it's so hard to make money in music? That is what I'm going to explain in this video, along with some very specific advice for anybody that does want to make a living off of their creative passion, whether that's music or film or design or illustration, podcast, whatever. Now, fair warning, you may not like everything that I have to say in this video. There's some bitter pills to swallow for musicians and other artists, but if you can't handle the truth, I don't know what to tell you. That sounds like your problem, not mine. But before I get into all that, first I want to thank Storyblocks Audio for sponsoring this video. Storyblocks Audio is a great service for when you're in need of a quick sound bite for any project. You get unlimited downloads from studio quality audio clips, loops, music tracks, and sound effects with a membership to Storyblocks Audio. All content is royalty free, so you can use it for commercial and personal projects such as YouTube videos. New clips are added regularly, so there's always something fresh to download. I would very highly suggest checking this out if you do videos, a podcast, games, like anything where sound and music is involved. Because good music, good sound effects, good sound design makes a huge, huge difference. I would actually say that audio quality is more important than video quality in a lot of cases, and finding high quality audio that doesn't cost an arm and a leg is by far the biggest pain in the butt for me and I think a lot of other creators. And Storyblocks Audio instantly solves that problem. There's over 42,000 sound effects. So now when I want something, I'm not gonna have to Google and go through all these like sketchy, crappy, free wave sound effects kind of sites. It's all right there for me on Storyblocks Audio. So if you wanna learn more about Storyblocks Audio, just hit that link in the description. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. Hey! How come my pay is so low? So first, let me just answer the question that I put out in the title of the video. Why are musicians poor? It's not streaming. It's not managers or promoters of the labels. Like, it's not the industry. There is no cabal of cigar-chomping guys packed away in a smoky room somewhere, like, rubbing their hands together and cackling and scheming up ways that they can screw you, the hardworking, honest musician, just trying to make a buck off of his creativity. That is about as real as the Illuminati. Music simply is not worth what it used to be, and... I don't think that's gonna change anytime soon. Yes, there's like piracy and streaming and downloads and all that stuff, but really what it comes down to, like I said earlier, is supply and demand. What? This is an outrage. You probably learned about this in high school, but let me just give you a little bit of a refresher and explain how it applies to music. So you've got two things. You've got supply here and you've got demand here. And where those two things meet in the middle, that is called the market clearing price or the equilibrium price. This is the price that the market has decided this thing is worth. This is what people are willing to pay for this product at the given levels of supply and demand. And as you probably remember from econ class, when supply goes up and demand stays the same, what happens? Prices go down. And what if we look at demand? What happens when demand goes down, but supply stays the same? Well, again, prices go down. Like when a new game console comes out and it's really hard to get, you can't find it in the store, and so people sell it on eBay for like three times what they paid for it, that's because supply is low, right? <laughs> Very simple, demand remains the same, scarcity drives prices higher. Now what if you put those two things together? What if supply goes up while demand goes down? Then the price goes way, way down, like the price crashes because there's a massive supply of this product on the market, but nobody really wants it, so prices crash. Well, I think this is exactly what's happened to music. Let me explain. I stand before you, ladies and gentlemen, as the world's first and only stand-up economist. My dad told me I was crazy. You're on. He said, you can't be a stand-up economist. There's no demand. <laughs> so on the supply side, what we see is that there's more music than ever because it's cheaper to make and distribute music. Like you can absolutely 100% make a pro quality recording in a bedroom studio with nothing more than probably like a few hundred bucks worth of gear on a laptop. As a lot of people have pointed out in my comments, rap and EDM are especially kind of conducive to that bedroom studio kind of workflow because really all you need is some samples, a laptop, and a cheap mic and actually in the case of EDM you don't even need the mic try to relax your anus but it's by no means limited to rap and EDM this is true of rock and metal too thanks to companies like Tune Track and GGD and JST and Neural and all these other companies making awesome software for virtual drums and virtual amps now there's this whole generation of like bedroom laptop metal bands just like there was with rap and EDM a few years before that the in the back in the back 
Periphery is probably the ultimate example of that. They started as Misha's like bedroom project back in 2008 or whenever it was. And now they're one of the biggest bands in modern metal. And personally, I think this is awesome. Like where 20 or 30 years ago, it would cost you thousands of dollars to buy all this gear, pay for studio time and hire some like asshole engineer who doesn't give a shit about your band to record you. Now you can do it all yourself. You can make a record in your bedroom that sounds just as good, if not better than a lot of pro recordings from 20 or 30 years ago that cost thousands of dollars. And distribution is also easier and cheaper than ever. So in the past, you had to come up with thousands of dollars to press vinyl or CDs and then hope that you would sell enough of them to recoup your costs, which you almost never did. You can ask anybody that put a record out 15 years ago that still has boxes of them sitting in their garage and lost thousands of dollars on it. Now it's as easy as putting it up on YouTube and SoundCloud or whatever service you want to use that'll push your stuff out to Spotify and Apple Music and Google Play and Amazon and all that. I personally like DistroKid for this because they sponsor me, but there's also CD baby, there's TuneCore, there's probably a bunch of other ones I don't know about. All these services that for like 20 bucks a year will push all your stuff out to these global distribution platforms, again, from your bedroom with the click of a button. How cool is that? The barriers to entry in terms of both production and distribution are lower than ever. And whether you think any of this music being produced is good or not is beside the point. The point is that because music production and distribution are cheaper and easier than ever, this means that the supply of music has gone up, which in turn means what? You guessed it, the market value of music goes down. I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! And at the same time that supply of music is increasing, demand for music is decreasing. And like I said earlier, what does that mean for prices? <laughs> prices crash, go way down. So what is causing demand for music to go down? Well, to put it simply, people have other options for their entertainment. And remember, that's what music is, it's entertainment. And people now have so many options for how to spend their entertainment time and money that honestly, music just isn't as special as it used to be. It just doesn't compare to a lot of the other options. Video games, Netflix, YouTube, Twitch, texting, social media. As a musician, you are competing against not just other musicians, but all the other things that your audience could be doing with their free time and money. When I was in high school, which is before most of that stuff existed, I would just like sit in my room and listen to music, do nothing else, sit there, listen to the album, look at the artwork, read the liner notes, and that was cool, but that, it just seems so insanely dated to me now. Like I can't imagine a high school kid doing that now when they have so many other options for entertainment. And to be honest, if I had all these options now, I don't think I would have either. In a lot of ways, I think music is now just the background for all the stuff that I just mentioned. When a streamer plays a song in the background, when they're on Twitch, playing a game or when there's a song playing in the background of a stupid skit on TikTok. Like the song is part of the video, but the real focus is the skit. In terms of the entertainment hierarchy, music is now a second class citizen. It's not at the top of the food chain anymore. So when I hear musicians say, people don't know the value of music these days, it makes me go, no, you don't know the value of music these days. The market decides what something is worth. Not you, not me, the market. That's a competition in a market. And I think this is the biggest disconnect for musicians because they're emotional creatures. They're highly invested in their work. And to be honest, I think they have a little bit of a sense of entitlement. They feel like they've been wronged anytime the market doesn't agree with their own sense of how valuable their music is. But this is my art. This means everything to me. How can you put a price on that? But I spent two years making this album. How are you gonna tell me that you're only gonna pay me 0 0.003 cents per stream when I spent hundreds of hours making this thing? Well, again, you don't decide what anything is worth. The market does. And let me give you a couple analogies that will kind of, I think, highlight a lot of the faulty thinking for musicians on this. Let's say that I have a 1992 Acura Integra GSR that I got back in high school and hung on to for all those years. And yeah, it's pretty beat up and it's got 300,000 miles on it, but man, that car means everything to me. Like, I never let it go for less than $10,000. I drove that car on my first date. I hate to break it to you, you might think it's worth $10,000, but Kelly Blue Book, aka The Market, says it's worth 1,700 bucks. Because guess what, nobody cares how much emotional attachment you have to this thing, just like nobody cares how much emotional attachment you have to your music. And as far as the other kind of unstated assumption that the longer you spend making a thing, the more it's worth, well, that doesn't really hold up either. Think about it this way. Let's say you walk into a deli looking for a sandwich and the guy explains to you that he spent five hours making the sandwich and all he asks is $20 an hour for his time, so the sandwich is 100 bucks. I made a chicken sandwich completely from scratch. 
which cost $1,500 in six months of my life. Would you pay him 100 bucks for the sandwich? Of course not, because you don't give a shit how long it took him to make the thing, right? Just like nobody cares how long it took you to make your music. Nobody cares that you had to practice for a million hours to play your tech death song while some rapper made his song in 15 minutes because he just downloaded a beat off the internet. Nobody gives a shit. The only thing they care about is whether it sounds cool to them. So the bottom line is this. Music is just like any other product. It has no inherent value. It's worth what someone is willing to pay for it. I feel a deep sense of responsibility to share my simple but practical economic template. All right, so that's the bad news, or as I think of it, a little tough love. The good news is that yes, it's tough out there, it's not easy to make a living off of music, but it is totally possible as long as you treat it like a business. And by that, I don't mean like selling out and trying to do something that's gonna be commercially appealing. I think that almost always fails. I just mean that you have to have a plan for how you're gonna turn this into your income and the discipline to actually put in the work to make that plan happen. And then it's just a matter of putting together a business plan. And what goes into a business plan is more than I can get into in detail in this video. But really what it comes down to is just setting a goal and then working backwards to figure out how you're gonna get there. As a super simple example, let's say you wanna make $25,000 off of music. Well, how are we gonna get there? Let's start by breaking it down into simpler chunks that might be a little bit easier to digest. So first of all, $25,000 a year, that's about $2,100 a month. So how are we gonna make 2,100 bucks a month off of music? Again, I'm leaving out a lot of details to make this simple, but let's just say that there's three ways that we are gonna make money off of music. Album sales, merch, and Patreon. Throw all that into a simple spreadsheet like this one, and here's what you have. We've got albums, shirt, and Patreon here up at the top. The albums we're gonna put on Bandcamp for 10 bucks. Bandcamp takes 5%, last I checked, so that means we make 950 off each album. The shirts we're gonna charge 20 bucks for. Let's say that our cost on those is $8 each, which means $12 of profit, and on Patreon, Patreon, let's say that our main tier is $10 a month. Patreon takes about 5%, so that means $9.50 of profit per Patreon user per month. So then we figure out what combination of these things is gonna get us to our monthly goal of $2,100 a month in revenue. There's any number of combinations of these things that add up to $2,100 a month, but as one example, let's say we sell 75 albums, 35 shirts, and we get 100 people on Patreon. Boom, we just made $2,100 a month or $25,000 a year off our music. And again, this could be like your illustration or design work. It could be a podcast, a YouTube channel. Like the same idea is gonna work for any kind of creative field. Wow, I can't believe it. That's fantastic, Papa. Let me try. And this isn't even figuring in all the other ways that you might be able to monetize, like brand deals or teaching lessons or streaming or YouTube or VIP or any of the other ways that you might be able to monetize. This is all stuff that you can do without even leaving your house. You don't need anything more than a phone and maybe a laptop. Now, you're not gonna live like a king or a queen on $25,000 a year, but it is enough that you could quit your day job and just get some random part-time job that allows you to quit anytime you wanna go on tour. And if you wanna make 50 or $100,000 a year, well, you have the formula, you just need to scale up what you're doing. Now, to be clear, I'm not saying this is gonna happen overnight, I'm not saying it's gonna be easy, because it's gonna be hard, it's gonna take a fuckload of work, but it is possible. It's totally achievable as long as you're willing to put in the work, and again, think of it like a business. So if you ever hear anybody complaining about how people don't know the value of music these days and the industry is screwing artists and blah, 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 now you know the truth. Those are all a bunch of bullshit excuses. They need to shut the fuck up and get to work on their business plan. Shut the fuck up Nobody even wants you here. Because what it comes down to is this. It's simple supply and demand. We are living in such an amazing, cool time. Thanks to technology and the internet and all this other stuff, like there's absolutely nothing stopping you from making a living off of your music, your artwork, a podcast, YouTube channel, whatever it is that you do, there is nothing standing in your way other than yourself. Stop making excuses, start treating it like a business because guess what? Yes, it is your art, but as soon as you wanna make money off of it, it's also a business. This one's my favorite. You might be an economist if you go to a Chinese restaurant and open up the fortune cookie and add at the margin at the end of it. <laughs> All right, my friends, there you have it. My two cents on why musicians are poor, or I guess more accurately, why it's so difficult to make money off of art. Hopefully that helped. If you wanna check out that spreadsheet that I did there, there's actually a link to it in the description, so you can go put in your numbers if you wanna see how you might be able to do it. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. Let me know what you have done to make money off of your music or art or anything else like that. I would love to
to hear from anybody that's had success. Love to hear from anybody that's learned from their failures. Let me know what you think in the comments. Before I let you go, I want to thank everyone who supports me on Patreon at the true cult level or above. Patrons get access to a bunch of cool stuff like an audio only feed of the podcast. I do reviews every month of patrons, bands and social media and stuff like that. So if you want to get my thoughts on what you're doing, then you can do that as a patron. There's also a private Discord server. There's monthly live Q and A's, bunch of other cool stuff. So if you're interested in supporting me on Patreon, it's a link to that in the description. And with that, I will sign off for now, but I will see you next time.